Oh, we gotta share it too. Yeah. Live stream. Yeah, live stream. That's what it was. That's live. Left. Yeah, but which one? Live stream is on your left. That's when that. Yeah, it's changed. Okay. Live on custom streaming service. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. Yeah. Right here? <laughs> and now we give you greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, you are now hearing Global Vision with Walter and Nina Zagravich, but they are not here. You got substituting for them, Tony and Marge Abram. And we have two wonderful guests today. Uh, and the two guests are, of course, Tom and Bev McLaughlin from Calgary, Alberta. And uh, they have been a blessing uh, both to our ministry, uh, Global Vision, Abundant Life Crusades, and a number of other ministries. And they have their own uh, website, their own uh, programs that they're on, uh, sharing the wonderful uh, good news of the gospel. So we're so glad that, and we'll be hearing from them in just a moment. But first, we would want to just give a little report on Walder and Nina and the team. Now, uh, not only is uh, Albert Ramirez and Marcy Laboki, uh, folks that you see on here from time to time, but also uh, you will find uh, that um, and besides them, there's others with them. And though there's been danger, I don't know if you know this, but not far from where they are meeting, and they had have had wonderful meetings in Potava, in Zaporizhia, in Kiev, Kharkiv, Kiev. Uh, there has been a, a lot of death, a lot of destruction, mm -hmm. and the war as it continues. We need to pray that there be an end uh, to this war, but. We know that God is protecting them, watching over them. And uh, uh, in a few moments, we're going to be praying for them. But it is a joy to be here. Marge, do you want to say hello to them before we uh, yes. introduce Tom well, and Bev? We are so happy to be on the program, and we appreciate Brother Walter and Sister Nina and the work they have done uh, with Global Vision and on these programs. But we also are so happy to see Tom and Bev. They've been friends of ours for many years, and we love them very much. And thank God for them. They're going to be sharing from their experiences, praise the Lord, and the message Brother Tom has prepared. But today we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We trust that you are listening and receiving God's blessing already because we send God's word to you. We send encouragement to you. We just bless you in Jesus' name. And we just pray today that the anointing of the Lord will abide with us and with Tom and Bev and with all that are listening today. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, and God, we're, we're, we are certainly glad. And they have been a blessing to our ministry in so yeah. many ways. Yes. And so, uh, Tom and Bev, how about giving a, a greetings from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, uh, to the folks that are watching on all platforms. But just now I remember something, and uh, uh, I, we yes. have to remember for to give you the opportunity to share and to share uh, the program so that uh, you can do some evangelism because you realize when you share it, 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 it expands the uh, viewing and hearing uh, uh, audience so that Amen. it not only reaches hundreds, it reaches thousands. And with the platforms that a uh, global vision has every country on the earth can be reached uh, if people will tune in. And that, that happens when you share. So don't forget to take your phone and hit the share button or whatever uh, you're using. Uh, like I use a laptop and uh, you may be using uh, a PC or 
or or watching on YouTube at a later date or time, you can still share, and God will bless you because you'll be doing evangelism and sharing the gospel. But anyways, sorry for going on there, Tom. Uh, you and Bev have been such a, a, a wonderful blessing to so many ministries, but uh, we, we'd like you to greet the folks, and I know that a little later uh, you're going to be not only praying and leading people to the Lord, but you you got a message that you want to share. And so God bless you. Well, thank you, Brother Tony uh, and Sister March. It's, again, it is a privilege from our side to be part of this uh, outreach here. Brother uh, Walter, uh, I appreciate him and what he's doing. And yes, remember to pray for him and the team that are in Ukraine right now. They were near some events that happened and lost life. So Psalm 91 over them, that the angels protect and, and that no, you know, the arrow that flies by day. I mean, how much more of a description of a missile that we have to, that's in Psalm 91. So we pray that over them and the precious blood of Jesus, but also over us. Thank you, Lord, that here that we uh, keep peace in this, both countries, uh, you and the folks in the U.S. and us in Canada. But uh, thank you again. And yes, remember to click the share, but that's what I was doing off the side here. Uh, make sure to share because then it, it does reach other people. Somebody will come across this and say, oh, yes, I need what these people are talking about. Why are they so happy? Why do they have Joe? So greetings from, we're actually up at our cabin right now. So we're we're, uh, we're taking a little break from the city. But yes, from Calgary, Alberta, that's north of Montana, if anybody wants to know. So greetings greetings to you. And dear, do you want to share? Put you on the spot. <laughs> What a blessing to be here. Thank you. Um, and I just want to praise the Lord that um, he speaks through us. He speaks through Tony and Marge. And uh, our heart is that God would have freedom in this meeting to speak to you, mm -hmm. to speak to your heart. Mm -hmm. Pray in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, it's always a joy to hear people say they want to share because that's a form of evangelism. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And how do we preach it? By not only speaking it, but by living it and by demonstrating it. Because Jesus says, ye are the, uh, you are my witnesses. Go ye into all the world. Where do you go? to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then he includes the whole wide world. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I have been teaching in a, in the Bible school uh, here uh, over in Nepal these last few, some days, and God has been blessing. And, and something I, I've been teaching on and emphasizing is our walk with God. And uh, and having balance, we don't want to get on a hobby horse and just emphasize one thing. We want the full gospel, the mm -hmm. whole gospel, mm -hmm. and we want to uh, we want all the word of God. And one one thing I like la my last uh, program in there in Nepal at the Bible school, and of course this is the middle of the night for me or at midnight and for me, but for them it's morning time, but. I did say, it, 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 in following the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he has he has a lot to say of himself. For for example, and I won't give you all the scripture; you can look it up. Jesus said he was the bread of life. He Jesus said, "I am the light of the world." Jesus said, "I am the door." He, Jesus said, "I am the good shepherd." Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, I am the true vine. And Jesus is all these things. And the best part, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said it, I am. And that's, and re, if you remember, if you read the Old Testament in the third chapter of Genesis, how that, uh, when Moses was hearing from the burning bush where God was speaking out of the burning bush, he had caused his voice to come because that burning bush 
drew the attention of Moses there on the desert because by by combustion from the heat, many times old dry bushes would burn, but this one burned and did not burn out. And here's Moses standing there. And finally, Moses says, after he gets the commission, what he's going to do, he says, who shall I say has sent me? And do you know what what the what God spoke? He says, I am is sending you. And so we, what do we remember? We remember, hallelujah, that Jesus is the I am, a present help in the time of trouble. With us, we measure time. Uh, we, we we got a minute, seconds, hours, but with God, there's no such thing as time. He knows the end from the beginning. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows what's happening all in the past, present, and future. And so God does not say, Jesus never said, I was, I am the great I was, or I am the great I'm going to be. He is the great I am, and he is he is here today. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and 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 you know what? I almost feel like preaching, but I'm not going to do it because Tom <laughs> has something special. <laughs> and I understand it's going to be on communion. And that's so important to have uh, communion with God. March, your last, in your last uh, recording, I noticed you haven't recorded any albums in the last few years. But there was a song that might go with um, to Tom and Bev's message today uh, that they have, and that that is about communion. What what is the word? What is yes. the name of that? Could you give us that before? Uh, yes, we speak? yes. Um, it it was called "Come, Let Us Break Bread," and mm -hmm. it was an anointed song. And I would sing it during communion mm -hmm. services a lot of times. And uh, the words are: "The cross became a table as they laid it on the ground." Then upon it, they placed the bread of life as Jesus lay down. With spears and swords, the soldiers gathered round. The hammer was raised to put the nails in their place. It's as though the soldiers said, come, let us break bread. Come, let us break bread. As we gather together at the Lord's table, Come, let us break bread. He said, take this cup and oft as you drink, often as you drink it, think of me and remember my blood that was shed for you from me. Then take this bread and break it as they broke me. The blood's for your cleansing, the bread's for your healing. Come, have communion with me. And as we gather, we don't, we're not going to have communion, but I know Tom is going to be speaking on communion, and it's going to be a blessing. But Brother Tom and Sister Bev, I just wanted to share with you that I know you're students of the Word and study the Word and you share the Word. And I remember my Bible college days that I was so blessed to go to Bible college. Many people would have loved to go, like my father said, if I was young again, I would want to go to a Bible college and study. But anyway, he was a sawmill worker. He had to work to support our family. And but but I remember my Bible college days. We had such wonderful teachers, anointed mm -hmm. teachers that taught us, and one of them was Brother. W.J. Howells. He was a preacher, a Welshman, came from Wales, England, and uh, Britain, and he was a, uh, a wonderful teacher of the gospel and preacher. He went before us even in the crusades we had in England and said he would be like a co-evangelist before us. This was many years later, I suppose 20 or more years yeah. later. But anyway, he was a preaching and on communion in his church way back in Wales many years ago. And he, this is before I ever heard this teaching, and I'm sure many of you have heard this, but he asked, he was reading on about the road to Emmaus, the two disciples, Cleophas was one of them, the other one isn't named, but they were on their way, way to Emmaus near Jerusalem. And, and Jesus drew near to them and talked with them. 
and he communed with them. And then they asked him to come and break bread with them at there in Emmaus, which he did. But they they did not know that it was Jesus that was with them. And they and they were just amazed at what he was teaching and telling them. But Brother Howell said, as he was teaching on this, he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, how did they know it was you? And he said, suddenly he had the revelation that they knew it was Jesus because when he broke the bread, the arms of his, folds of his uh, garment went back and they saw the nail prints in his hands. I had never heard that and it blessed me so much. It blessed us, our students, and I never forgot it because it was re a revelation. And also he had many wonderful things happen to him. He said when they had some army soldiers come from Canada and, and other places, he said, he said that they would feed them and give them sandwiches or, you know, and he said the bread, they only had a little bit of bread left, but he said they had prayed. And as he cut the bread, the bread kept multiplying as he kept cutting the bread, it kept multiplying and they were able to feed those soldiers. And I thought God is the miracle worker. He does the same today as he did yesterday. He will do. He supplies needs. Those that are hungry, we pray for them and, Try to help the hungry and the poor and those that are suffering and those that don't have water. We try to help in those ways. But it's just this drop in the bucket, as we say, that to what is needed all around the world. And I just thank God. And I just want to give thanks to those Bible teachers, Bible school teachers, those mm -hmm. in Nepal that are teaching, Brother Deepak that's working there in the Abundant Life Bible College, and Tony's mm -hmm. ministering over there this week. And I just thank God for all the teachers, all the ministry, and Brother Tom and Sister Bev are ministers of the gospel too. And so we thank God for them. We bless them. And we just pray God's continued blessing on their ministry and their anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I thought you were going to take off preaching. So there's, <laughs> there's an anointing here that we all want to do some preaching. Well, anyways, as I said, for you that are just tuning in, we have with us Tom and, and Bev McLaughlin, and they are from Calgary. That's the uh, rodeo. That is the stampede uh, city, city right. of the world. And, uh, of course, I don't know how good a horseback riders they are. I haven't ridden a horse since I was about 25 years old. And I'm six eighty five now, so that's 60 years since I've been on a horse. But anyways, we're still traveling for the Lord Jesus. And uh, we just love him. And we love the, our our fellow us uh, laborers in the vineyard of God, Tom and and Bev yeah. McLaughlin. God bless you both. And as you share, and I think you're sharing a, a bit on the on on the communion, on the bread breaking, or whatever it's called in different parts of the world, but mm -hmm. it's because of the, your experience with Christ and your ministry that you have that you're able to do this. God bless you both. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor whenever God chooses to speak through us. And so we just pray. I pray for my husband as he shares the word on breaking bread, remembering the Lord is basically what we're doing. Remembering how powerful his death and resurrection is in our lives. So bless you, sweetheart. <laughs> thank you. It's always good to have support. Yes, um, thank you. When I was asked to share, I uh, says, oh, Lord, uh, what, what, um, what do you want for the people? And uh, and talk about communion. Now, the communion, there's different kinds of communion, like talking to one another, fellowshipping, that's communion. But I want to share about the actual act uh, what we do in a lot of churches where we have like a little wafer and maybe a little juice or something like that, or some places actually, you know, have other things. But um, this is what I was in my heart. It was just to come back to that because that is really what this is all about is we have to remember what Jesus did for us. We get, we get sometimes in the rut doing things and we tend to forget the sacrifice Jesus did. Oh yeah. We, we know 
in our minds that, you know, Jesus died for us all. But when we reenact it by the fellowship of the Last Supper, some people call it that, it really brings it to home. So I'm just going to go in uh, Mark, uh, the book of Mark, the second uh, gospel, Matthew, Mark, uh, Mark 14, 22 to 24. And that speaks about the Lord's Supper. And uh, just if you want to, just take some time and read it and say, Father, talk to me. Let the Holy Spirit minister to me about the communion. And again, to reiterate it in our lives. And you know what the beauty about this is? He says, as you often as you do it, that's how it starts off in uh, Mark 14, 22. And when they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed and broke it. So Jesus' body was broken for us. He didn't break bones, but in a sense, he broke with the, the stripes on his back. He got punched. He got his beard ripped out. Of course, the crown of thorns, all that. He was laughed at, spat at, um, mocked especially. And, you know, we have Jesus uh, some places have him on the cross with a nice robe and all that. He was totally naked the shame was upon that was the lowest type of uh, punishment in the romans day was for stealing or something that was the cruelest and lowest type of punishment and jesus did that he took your shame on the cross and so when we do communion as in the we call it the bread and cup some people call it communion whatever but the point being is that this brings it back into remembrance because he said as you do this do this in remembrance of me as you do this. And, you know, there's no law that says some places do it once a month. Some do it twice a month. I know some people do it every day. Um, it's between you and the Father. But the thing is to what I want to share, and I believe the Father, is, the Heavenly Father is trying to say to us, is just remember Jesus. Just remember what he did. And then you get the more of a gratitude, thankfulness. And I like what Sister March shared in her song. What a powerful song you were. Actually, I wish you would have sung that. That's beautiful, Sister March. But... You know, you were saying about the broken, being broken. And that is so true. Jesus' body was broken for us. And just like the song said, you know, I never thought of that way. That's that's a what a revelation. When the cross was laid down on the ground and Jesus was being attached to it with the nails, it's like you're offering up a meal, the bread of life. And Jesus did call himself the bread of life. So this is part of communion is, yeah, it's it was a horrible thing that happened. But what a joy that Jesus said, I did this for you. He did this willingly because he did pray. He says, Father, if this is possible, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane, if this is possible, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, your will be done, not mine. And he willfully went to the cross with joy. And he saw you on the cross. I don't know how that happens. God, you have to remember, God, there's no time with God. So he could see all eight million of us or how many billion of us. Yeah, billion, I guess. Um, he saw your face and he's saying, for you, I did this. You receive this into your heart. And that's how you get what they call born again. And we'll do a prayer at the end here. But again, what is communion? It's not a ritual, but it's just a reminder. Thank you, Jesus, what you did for us. So in Mark 11, um, uh, sorry, my apology, Mark 14, 22, slow down, Tom. And as they did eat, so the saints were all having, the apostles were having fellowship. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and says, take eat, this is my body. So the symbol of Jesus laying his life down for us. So we tend to sometimes forget that part. You have made a body for me. That's what Jesus said, I think was in Hebrews. You've made a body for me. And this is the sacrifice. See, if I could just add one little thing. You know, the manger scene we all see at Christmas when Jesus is wrapped in the swaddling clothes and it looks so cute. Do you realize that that swaddling cloth, which were strips of uh, cloth or something like that, was a designated cloth for a lamb that they had said, this will be our sacrificial lamb. It couldn't have any spots, any bruises, couldn't have like that. So they wrapped it at birth so it wouldn't bang and get bruised. Jesus was wrapped in the same swaddling clothes. So upon his birth, he was the designated lamb of God for you to take away our sins. I mean, that is what communion is, is we're just remembering you were the sacrificial lamb. So his body was presented, a sinless, spotless body was presented to the Father as the ultimate sacrifice. This is why we don't have to. Oh, thank God. We're Right now we're in, doing studies in Leviticus and Deuteronomy for a little Bible study. And the amount of sacrifices they did for sin. Thank God we don't have to do it anymore. Jesus did all this on the cross. 
you just need to receive this. And that's what a gift is. You can't earn it. You just say, Jesus, I receive this. I believe what Tom is sharing, that you did this for me. I receive this. Maybe you've fallen away from the Lord. There's still a chance to get back. God has you here for a reason. And verse uh, 23, and once he passed the bread amongst everybody, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, again, that's another reason why in communion, we say thank you, Father, for this. Again, remembrance what Jesus did on the cross. When somebody gives you a gift, it's not like, how would I say? It's not like the ugly t-shirt, what they call that ugly sweatshirt, a Christmas gift where you say thank you. This is an ultimate gift. And the thing is, is that you would be continuously thankful for it. It's not like uh, somebody gives you something and says, okay, well, that's it. And you should put it in your shelf and maybe you give it to somebody else. No, this was a gift that was eternal. That's why we always say thank you. We always give thanks for this, even during communion. And so verse 23, he took the cup, Jesus did. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. So both the bread or the body, if you want to say, and both the drink, the cup. Some people don't use wine. They use grape juice. It doesn't matter. It's your heart. Sometimes we use water. There was nothing around, so we use water. The purpose is, is that we remember the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And we take both the two. Some places only give you the body. They don't give you the other part. So whatever. But for you, this is all for you. This was all done. What the blood did is it purchased your salvation. The body was the ultimate purchase, but the blood is the one that sealed it. And we know that the blood of Jesus, and we read other verses, this is it washes us whiter than snow. So Jesus takes your sin and washes them. And that to me is, is, is like phenomenal how that works. And then he says in verse 24, there is, I should just read the rest of the next verse in Mark 14, 24. And Jesus said unto him, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. You're part of the many. But do you notice this is the New Testament? Not that the Old Testament is done away with, but the requirement for your repentance and purchase. See, sin has to be met by death. There has to be a death for it. God did not want all these bulls and goats. He actually says he doesn't really care for that, but he had to show severity of sin. And what is sin? What is sin in your life? Simply just going against what you know is right. It could be something in your heart. See, in the Old Testament, it says if you murdered somebody, then you would have to, you're guilty of it. So you're guilty of sin. In the New Testament, Jesus said if your heart hates somebody, and I'm sure we've all done that, and that is where we say, oh Lord, thank you for the blood. Forgive me for thinking that thought against that person. Thank you for what I did. Thank you for thank you for not what I did, but thank you for forgiving me. And the blood you shed on the cross. So we read in, in Hebrews as well, if you ever want to study about the, the cross and all that, the book of Hebrews. He says this was his body was offered up once. Hebrews 10.10. 10. There's a verse for you to memorize. Hebrews is easy, 10.10. 10. Hebrews 10.10, 10, the book of Hebrews. His body was offered once for sin. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Jesus did it all on the cross. We look back to what Jesus did on the cross. And that's what we call faith. So, yeah, you have that in there. Can I just add? Yeah, go ahead. One for all. Once for all. Jesus died for all. And you that are listening today, you are one of those people that Jesus died for. And we just pray that if you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, you will, because he covers all our sins. He makes us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's, it's, it's miraculous what Christ did for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, another verse, if I can share, and I'm almost done here. I remember I was promised not to go long. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 23 to 26. So 1 Corinthians 11. So a little bit of, a couple of verses to memorize. Hebrews 10, 10, Mark 14. He, this is a good little study for you. So this is where uh, the Apostle Paul, now some people don't like him, but whatever, it's it's in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For Paul, I have received of the Lord, which he delivers unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed. Now remember Judas, the bad guy? That's the night he is his, Satan entered his heart. 
and he decided I'm going to sell out. You know, it's uh, I don't want to get into that area, but the love of God. Judas was one of the hand picked and God knew it from day one that he was going to be a problem, but he still gave him a chance. And Judas, and when Jesus was doing the Last Supper, so if you read in, like in Luke, or if you read in Matthew, there's different accounts of it. Uh, he's saying, one of these people that's, Jesus says, when he was dipping the bread into the wine, he says, one of these people that sup with me, eat with me, shall betray me. And the apostles were like saying, who, who, who? That's the love of God. He even knew that Judas would betray him. And when Judas brought the, the pack to come after Jesus, you know, when he kissed him on the side, and he says, I'll show you who Jesus is by kiss. What did Jesus say to him in the book of John? He says, what do you want, friend? That one word, friend. And he wasn't saying sarcastically. He was still giving Judas a chance to repent. Now, Jesus had to die and go to the cross for you and me. Everything's laid out. But yet, God still gave a chance. Man, oh man. So that is the grace of God. So you've screwed up. You've done wrong. You haven't done like Judas, so don't worry about that. But you've done some wrong things. God is saying, what do you want, friend? And what you should say, or I can say in your heart, forgive me, Lord. Come into my life. That's what Judas should have done is said, forgive me, Lord. Receive me back. See, he backslid, obviously, because he turned from God. 30 pieces of silver. But God still gave him a chance to repent. Or Jesus, you can say, what do you want, friends? So God has given you this chance right now. You listen to this message right now, a letter, it doesn't matter when. God has given you a chance to repent. What do you want, friend? I want you to back, come back to my life, Jesus. I want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I want to be used by you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Here's one way to submit to God. Humble yourself and say, I need you. So in 1 Corinthians, this, when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, take it as my body. So this is another account. And uh, so 1 Corinthians 11 was broken. Do this in remembrance of me. This is why we do communion. How often you do it, totally up to you. The beauty about this is you can do it between you and the Lord. You can do it in a congregational setting or you can do this at home. Bev and I do this once in a while. We just say, let's do communion. We 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 take a, a piece of crack or something like that, and we have a juice or we had water last night, and we just broke it, and we just said, Lord, this is your body. We remember what? See, that's why he says, remember what I do. Don't say, do this, but we do this in remembrance and thankfulness, because he said he gave thanks. So thank you for your body that was broken, the stripes by Jesus. Isaiah 53, if you folks want some reading homework, go to Isaiah chapter 53 and just, just go through that chapter. And you'll see that it talks about somebody who was beaten, who, who, who we thought that God was rejecting this person. That was speaking of Jesus, Jesus. So thank you for your body that was broken for us. And then he says he took the cup and he supped and he says, this is the cup of the New Testament. The blood sealed our redemption. The blood sealed our redemption. And um, my blood, as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And then it goes, as often as you do this, you show this until the day of the Lord's return. So Jesus is coming back again. Some people say, well, where's the promises calling? Coming. Yeah, he's coming like a thief in the night. You know, if you want to think about Noah, right, the guy that built the boat, it didn't rain. But God told him to start building a boat. One day it's going to happen. And sure enough, it happened. What happened? The flood. There's evil coming on this earth. There's evil right now, but not as we've seen before. There's evil coming. That's not the time to get right with God. Today is the day. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your hearts. So if I can just encourage you, and we'll do a little prayer here. Um, just remember that Hebrews 10.10, Jesus offered himself once. Is no more needed. He says that it is finished in John chapter 19. When he was on the cross, he knew that it was finished. Finished what? The price that has to be paid for your sin. This is what faith is. This is what trusting in God is. You hear these terms. What Jesus did, I believe and I receive. So let me introduce you to 
Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And it's simply looking into your heart and saying, Lord, forgive me. Let's do a prayer. I'm going to do a prayer here. And if you want to follow along or repeat after me, but just say, dear Jesus, or you want to say, dear Heavenly Father, because we know the Our Father prayer. So Our Father, dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I believe what I just heard, that on the cross, you paid for the price of my sin, your death. I also believe that your blood washes me from sin. Your blood brings me into the new covenant, the New Testament covenant, being a child of the king. I receive, this is what you should say, or I don't like using the word should. This is what you can say. I receive that forgiveness, Lord. I receive your forgiveness into my life. God will not push himself into your life. He's going to be a gentleman and ask. This is what we call free will. So this is why you speak this. And you say, Lord, come into my life. I receive you. And the next thing, if I can suggest to say, is that I want to be used by you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a desire to, to walk with you. Give me a love. He will, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Give me a love for the people, your people. Because John uh, 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish, but ever everlasting life. You want everlasting life? Just here I am, Lord. Forgive me. Come into my life. If you said these things, then definitely welcome to the family of God. Get a hold of Brother Tony, get a hold of Brother Walter, get yourself a Bible, that's a good one, and then get yourself a good fellowship. Then let us know. Let us know in the comments, in the Facebook comments, or let us know below that you have done that. And um, yeah, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Do you want to read that, dear? Um, yeah, this, it's sort of in the middle of the sentence, but it comes in that if thou confess with your mouth the Lord. the Lord Jesus, and believe it in your heart that God did raise him out of the dead. You shall be saved. That's yes. how, how simple and direct. The, I mean, it wasn't a simple plan, but for us, our part is so simple. For with the heart, one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation so when you do this the enemy might come and try to put doubt in your heart because it seems so simple but don't listen to the enemy don't listen to those negative voices because god said in his word if you confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart you will be saved this is the whole christian walk a lot of people believe God up here. And if you're one of them, okay. But that doesn't get you into heaven. The devil believes that there's a God. He's not getting into heaven. It's when we have it in our heart. The heart being your very conscious, your soul, if you want to say. If you believe in your heart, which you just heard today, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. But we have to speak it. That's the difference. See, a lot of the Churches I went to and stuff like that, we just listened to somebody else talk all the stuff, and we we nodded our head, yes, I agree. That's not the same. It's when you speak it, your heart, out of the abundance of the mouth, your heart speaks, and you say, Lord Jesus. Do that right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me. Yeah. Lord Jesus, if you backslid, Lord, take me back, please. He will hear that prayer. A bruised reed. Uh, uh, what's how's the next one? Uh, uh, um, a coal, whatever. He will not quench. God will always hear. He listens to your heart, and your mouth speaks it forth. God created the heavens and earth. How did He do it? He spoke it forth. So there's power in your. You know, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, and the words. And the, yeah, words do hurt. That's why we have so many problems these days. So the words hurt us. Words can heal us. And this is the healing. 
Lord Jesus. So that's what Bev was reading, Romans uh, 10, 9, and 10. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. How much more simpler can that be? That's the beauty about this. And like I say, the next step, get yourself a Bible, contact these folks, start praying, start talking to God like you would a friend. He is our Heavenly Father. But you know, my prayer is to be like a friend to the Lord, that he talks to me, like Enoch, or even, yeah, what a privilege to have a Heavenly Father, a real father, not one, what do we call these other fathers, the loser dads, whatever, but a real Heavenly Father that wants to look after you. Amen. And for those of you who asked the Lord into your heart, welcome to the family yes. of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. He loves you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. Glory to God. And the last verse here, before I get in trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> remember, I, <laughs> Brother Tony says, keep it uh, short. <laughs> you know, when you get to sharing, it's hard. Um, remember, I shared in John 19, uh, 30, where Jesus on the cross said, it's finished. That's exactly what he meant. There's nothing more you need to do to get saved. It is finished. You well, nothing more needs to be done. You need to receive that. And that's why I say you have to speak these things. That's how you receive. When I give you a gift, here's a pen, right? Cheap pen, whatever. I give you a pen. What do you? What did your mother teach you? Say thank you. Well, that's what you're doing. You just receive the gift of eternal life. Thank him. Remember I just shared when we did the uh, communion? There should be a time of saying thank you. You know, we get into the ritual, dump, dump, and we're done. Yum, yum. No, there's a time of saying thank you. So what communion today was, when you want to do, try, I, I recommend you do this, or I can say suggest or strong, go get yourself a, 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 a piece of bread, a little glass of water, say, Lord, just like I read there in Mark, uh, Mark again, if you want to know, uh, 14, this is your body, thank you, Lord, that you did this, I receive it, then you take the cup, and you say, Lord, this is your blood, thank you for this, because remember, this is remembrance, it's not your doing hocus pocus but you're doing this and you're saying i take the blood in remembrance and thank you for this that's what communion is and it, and it really focuses your mind that way when you realize that this happened so i was like i was saying in john 1930 it's finished on the cross but here's a really interesting little tidbit remember i said when jesus was born and he's wrapped in the swallowing clothes eric <clears throat> god has everything under control it may seem like chaos out there in the world it is but not has to be in your life. In John uh, 1930, what I want to get to is two verses before. When, when Jesus looked around, he said he knows that everything was fulfilled. All the prophecies about him were fulfilled. Then he says, I thirst. And that's remember when they dipped the Roman soldier, dipped the whatever the sponge or whatever it was, and put it into his mouth. Why the vinegar? To dry him out. So that he would, that's when how they died up there. They basically died on the cross by dehydration. Anyways, so when he dipped the vinegar into his mouth, that Jesus knew that everything was fulfilled. He said, I thirst. And then when that happened, it's finished. So God has everything, on, even while on the cross, in pain, in shame for you, God still had everything in control. And even after that, here's another thing. I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit. One more. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead in the tomb? You see these pictures, these some beautiful paintings, and they show the... The linen cloth that was over Jesus was just kind of just thrown all over the place and then the stones rolled away. And it's cute. But if you read in John, it actually, the linen was folded and put at the end of the death table or wherever they laid them on. Even in the resurrection time, God has time to make things decently in order. And he'll do that with your life. Just receive them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tony well, just wanted to share something with uh, what Bev and Tom have said. Uh, I, I remember, you know, there's people that have prayed that prayer and they may say, well, you know, I've prayed that prayer and I don't have the assurance in my heart that I'm really born again. And when I remember in England, we were dealing with people, Tony had led 
them in the sinner's prayer. And then this one, the pastor said, that woman uh, there, she doesn't have the assurance of her salvation. And, and so Tony said, Marge, would you take that woman to the side room and talk with her? And so I began to talk with her and prayed with her. But I, before I prayed with her, I said, sister, I'll just call her Mary because I don't remember her name. But I said, let's just read, you read John 3.16, as Bev quoted, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And Mary, will you put your name in there? The Lord just dropped that in my heart. Put put mm -hmm. your name in there and say, for God so loved Mary, which she did. And she prayed that prayer. And then the joy of the Lord broke over her face. She smiled. And when we went back into the church, she was smiling and she told the Lord and told the people there and the pastor that she had received Jesus and she knew that she was saved. So if you haven't ever done that and you you don't have the assurance, just say, for God so loved the world, for God so loved me, Marge, God loved you, Tony, God loved you, Tom, God loved you, Bev, and he died for us. And then you will know that he loves you. He died for you. And the price was paid. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. If you were the only person that ever lived, uh, if, if Adam and Eve had not uh, had any children and, it, and, and, and uh, humanity would have stopped with them after they had sinned, Christ would have died for them. But he died for each and every one. He died for you. He died for me. And while Brother Tom and Be and Bev were uh, sharing, uh, it, 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 this is true. Everything on, uh, that they were saying is because God loves you. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. And the song comes to my mind. Uh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And then what's the next verse? Oh, precious oh, is the cross. Is the is the that, that makes, makes me. me. Well, we're not going to sing now. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> we want to. <laughs> we just wanted the yeah. words. Uh, anyways. We, 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 we are glad for you that have received and opened your heart. And do the three things that we've tried to emphasize. Talk to God every day. Amen. Let God talk to you and get into a Christian fellowship and be able to share what God has done with us, for others. And you will grow in the joy and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And and we also want to pray the prayer of faith. There's many of you, so many requests we get for physical healing, for uh, for different cancers, for uh, all kinds of diseases, and from leprosy to headaches. Uh, uh, but our God is a healer. And uh, we're going to pray right together and join together. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we send the word of healing. Lord, you see all those prayer requests that come in, yes. even the ones that pour in through uh, Facebook yes. and, and Lord and through other means, through the email, through the websites. Lord, in the name yes. of Jesus, yes. we send the word of healing yes. because when you said it is finished, not only did you provide the, uh, salvation for our spirit that lives forever, but also uh, for physical healing. For by your stripes, yes. Isaiah said, mm -hmm. uh, we, you are going to, and literally said, you're going to be healed. And then in Hebrews, we, we see the, word looking back peter's looking back and said in first peter he said by his stripes you were healed so whether it's isaiah 53 or peter repeating it jesus paid the price yeah. and so we send the word and while we're doing that 
we're going to pray for the nations. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're going to pray for Walter and Nina, yes. uh, that God will uh, just bless and keep them. And I, I believe God is, there's been an anointing on this whole broadcast today. Mm -hmm. If you have not felt, felt it, uh, just start to pray yes. and you're going to feel because there is a strong yes. anointing. Yes. So Heavenly Father, we agree together. We, we There are four of us, uh, Bev and Tom, Marge and myself. Uh, yes. We are agreeing. You said if two yes. agree upon touching anything, it shall be given them of our Father, which is in yes. heaven. Yes. And we send the word of healing. Yes. Lord, touch those eyes. Yes. Touch those ears. Uh, Lord, touch yes. uh, those uh, inward and outward conditions, those female conditions, yes. those male conditions. Uh, Lord, that uh, depression, uh, yes. Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that yes. loss of memory, yes. uh, Lord, yes. Alzheimer's disease, uh, Lord, in the aged, uh, and the children, Lord, the babies, uh, some have been even born uh, deformed, uh, Lord, we send the word of healing. You see the request coming from Pakistan, yes. from Africa, from yes. China, from yes. Japan, yes. from uh, the UK, Lord, from Europe. Uh, yes. Lord, in Jesus' name, uh, we send the word to the mm -hmm. islands of the sea. Uh, Lord, we send it, uh, uh, Lord, to the every continent, uh, for Australia, Lord, uh, to uh, Asia, Lord, to Europe, uh, Lord, to Africa, to South America, Central America, North America. We send it to uh, Canada. We send it to the United States, uh, Lord, in Jesus' name. And you see the two countries that are doing the most evangelism now to trying to reach the world. And yet, Lord, uh, these two countries are under great attack uh, from uh, modernism, uh, uh, Lord, for, uh, for all kinds of attacks. Uh, Acts uh, in Jesus' name, and that's Canada and the United States. Uh, and Lord, we pray that you may sweep uh, all nations uh, with an outpouring of the Spirit of God. We know the trumpet's going to sound soon. Uh, there is coming a catching away, uh, and time will be no more. So, Lord, today is the day of salvation. Now, is the accepted time. And, and Lord, we're believing for you to pour out of your spirit uh, in Jesus Christ's name. Now, put your faith in action. Uh, you that can do it, that pain, go in the name of Jesus. Uh, that weakness, go in the name of Jesus. Uh, those financial problems, uh, Lord, open the windows of heaven. Uh, Lord, I know that Malachi teaches us and let people look into the book of Malachi and see how that give and it shall be given to you. Lord, we ask that your people, whether poor uh, or are in poverty, Lord, as they act upon it, uh, things will happen. And Lord, as you lay upon our hearts the orphans, uh, Lord, from these wars that are going on in yes. Israel, uh, in in Ukraine, Lord, uh, you yet can protect. You can, Lord, you know it saddens me that that uh, works that we had started, uh, Lord, uh, some of those buildings uh, uh, that we have purchased uh, probably blown. Uh, to smithereens, but Lord, but in the midst of that, uh, there's revival in yes. the midst of the war, revival. And we pray for Walter, yes. Nina, and the team there, yes. that you will watch over them and yes. keep them and use them in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for Tom and Bev, and we pray that you will bless their ministry and you see how they and and other ministries that come up on global vision, uh, uh, Lord, uh, how that you can use them 
and that we thank you for their ministry in yes. Jesus yes. name uh, and Lord uh, uh, I ask uh, for a special blessing on on the teaching yet I have to do uh, on in Nepal at the Bible school there Lord uh, in, and I thank you that the opportunity that in my our, our old age, uh, at least mine, Lord, that I'm able uh, to preach around the world this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, be with those orphanages. Uh, Lord, be with those national workers. Uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, uh, let them be with soul winners. Uh, and Lord, there's so many things we want to lift up and lay at the master's feet. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for for our dear Walter and Nina Zagrabich, who are founders and have the vision for global vision. Lord, to the nations, a prayer for America, prayer for the nations, prayer for the people, lead people to Christ. Lord, we're glad to be a little part of that uh, in Jesus' name. And folks, I want to say to you, as we're, get, we're getting close to time running out, uh, you, you that are able, uh, you can get behind this men, ministry of faith, uh, Global Vision. Uh, we, Marge, you want to read that address uh, yeah. very closely? If you, this is the mailing address for, our, uh, for Global Vision. And 100% of what you would give like for Ukraine or the where they are now. Uh, for example, I know that Walter Zagravich, along with myself, have trained over 5,000 workers in the former Soviet Union in evangelism and soul winning in the schools. and and uh, But there has been much humanitarian work being done by uh, th this ministry of global vision uh, that well, well, a lot of people have gone to the West and 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 or to safe places, but many stayed behind. And what is happening because of feeding them and helping them? They are flooding the churches, or and they're coming for food, but they're getting spiritual food. And there is a revival amongst them uh, that are literally thousands have Churches been saved. Full, yes. yes, and yes. Uh, they can't hold the, the members. Uh, but if the people want to help, can you give that address? Yes, and wouldn't it be wonderful when Brother Walter and Sister Nina would come back and there would be some finances waiting there for them to uh, to take to help because they're also working in Cuba and other lands. And so... Uh, the address to send to is Global Vision Ministries, Post Office Box 5377, Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. So mm -hmm. I'll just repeat that box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, nine five seven six two and now that was a woman's voice and for those that might not understand well i'll throw <laughs> a male a male voice by myself globe global vision ministries post office box five three seven seven post office box five three seven seven el dorado Hills, California, and what you really need to get to the post office and, and then to the box itself is 95762. The postal code or zip code will reach that post office. And if you have the post office box of 5377, it will reach them and it will go 100% to helping evangelize. Well, I see our time's coming to a, a close. And we have been fortunate uh, hearing Tom uh, and Bev 
McLaughlin from uh, Calgary, Alberta. Uh, that's God's country up there. If you if it, if there's no forest fires, you want to be around uh, that part of the that Beautiful province. Country. That's that's province number. One. Well, I better be careful. I was going to say that's province number one, uh, but uh, the best, but. Uh, her beauty is it is beautiful. Yes, beautiful British Columbia, it's called, and beautiful Alberta. Yes. Yeah, because that is our second home, Alberta. Because you're originally from Alberta, and uh, anyways, we love you all. Um, Ten seconds for each one of you. Got it. Closing, closing. Uh, I just want to sum it up uh, today. In the Amplified, 1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our sins Jesus. in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, become immune from the penalty and the power of sin, and live for righteousness. For by his wounds, you who believe have been healed. Amen. Glory to God. That's First Peter Amen. two twenty four. That's First Peter two twenty four. So that's the word. The word will not return void. So thank you, Lord, for today. And that um, I encourage you, folks. Like I say, that's part of the blessings that Jesus did, and that's why we do communion because we remember that His body was broken for us, and the blood was shed for us to redeem us from the curse. We are no longer under the curse because of that. So take a, a, a cracker, take a juice, and just do it on your own. You don't need to have somebody else. This is one of the things I found out. You don't need a middleman. You can talk directly to God. And so I encourage you, just do this as often as you do in remembrance of him. So blessing to you folks, and thank you again for the privilege. Thank you. Amen. Thank you both. And that was a wonderful message on the communion, Brother Amen. Tom. Amen. And uh, thank you for his, thank Jesus for his blood that was shed. We thank the Lord every day, don't we, Tony, uh, in our devotions, both times, morning and night. We okay. thank God. Okay. Praise <laughs> the Lord. It's, it's worth, but coming to the end, remember to pray for Walter and Nina. Zagravich and for this ministry and pray for us as well pray and we, we're pray for our our teaching uh this evening uh while you're sleeping i'll be preaching <laughs> and then uh then also tomorrow marge and i will be on is it tomorrow yes, yes. uh tomorrow we'll be uh, on a broadcast and for the surprise guest well you'll just have to wait till tomorrow God bless you. We love you. And remember what Walter and Nina say. The Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the same. same. Yes, 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 today, 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 and forever. And forever. God bless you, folks. God bless. Oops. There. Live feed. That's it. <coughs> you stopped the recording, I guess. That's what I'm trying to do. It still says recording. So, hi, everybody. God's faithful. This is, stay on, and I'm going to just shut everything down and I'm going to get back on. So while he's doing that, Isaiah 53 <laughs> 6. I'll film. Should be at the bottom, brother. Down at the bottom, you'll see record. You're near the. Should be the second from the end on the right.